you're going to be making web pages, you need to understand tables. So let me teach that to you right now. Open up a Mozilla browser and go to the window and select Composer. And you want to, a blank one will pop up, but you want to open the one that you're working on from your website. So let's open the index one that we created. And that's my first web pages. So temporarily, I'm going to delete that text and I'm going to show you how to use tables first and then we'll go back and uh, put some text inside tables. Now I had to re-record this video a few times just because this browser is, uh, this composer is a little bit finicky. It's not the one that I use as a main one and uh, it likes to take tables and put them on the left if you don't do this little tip. So if you're going to be putting a table in the center of your page, which is normally what you want to do because on a traditional sales letter style website, if you go to websites selling ebooks, the traditional format is to have um, a big kind of centered table and then um, a different background on either side and a little bit, tiny bit at the top and a little tiny bit at the bottom of a background. But the main text is displayed on a table that's centered and on the page. So if you want the table to be centered, before you do anything else on the page, go to Format, go to Align, and hit Center. If you don't do this at this phase and you create a table anyway, uh, no matter what you do, if you save the page, it's going to put your table all the way to the left. And the only way to undo that is to know a little bit about hand coding, which you're going to learn very soon. But if you're just using the editor, you definitely want to center everything first. And then I just hit enter to go down a, a line before I insert my table. So I'm going to explain the different things about tables as I'm doing it and you'll understand it that way. So just sit back and I understand that you probably don't even know what a table is yet, but you will in the next few minutes throughout watching this video. So let's put a table in and once I put it in, you're going to start to see what a table is. So if I go to table and I go to insert, I select table. Now it's asking me how many rows, how many columns, how wide, and how thick the border should be. Now just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to leave it at two rows, but I'm going to make it three columns so you'll see the difference between a row and a column and you won't get those confused. For width, I'm going to stick with a standard of 600 wide and you normally don't want to do percent of window, you want to have a fixed pixels. This way, when you have a fixed width with 600 pixels, it's the lowest common denominator. All computer sizes, if they have a small screen, they'll be able to view the table because most screens have at least 600 pixels. Some have a lot more pixels, but uh, the average small screen will have at least 600 pixels, so it's the lowest common denominator. If you do percent width, right here, percent of window, um, let's just call it, suppose we wanted to make it 70, the table would expand and shrink so that it would take up 75% of the screen. You don't want to do that because when you're writing copy, you're going to want it to look a certain way, and if the table expands and contracts, it may put uh, different phrases that you thought were on the same line, it may put them on a separate line and make the text look kind of retarded. So make it 600 pixels wide and this way it will look the same on everyone's screen. And you don't want to make the main table more than 600 pixels wide because if you made this like 800 pixels wide, people with a screen that's only 600 pixels wide, every time they read a sentence they're going to have to scroll over to get to the end of the sentence and then they're going to have to scroll back to read the beginning of the new sentence. Nobody wants to read like that. That is just people are going to leave your website and they're going to be tired of you and it's just going to look very very cheesy and unprofessional if you do that. So 600 pixels wide you can always adjust this later. Uh, as you learn more you may form different opinions about this but 600 pixels wide is a good thing to stick with stick with. Now the border, we want to set that at one pixel for now. You may choose later to go back and make it zero pixels wide, but just for, from a des design perspective, 
you want to see that border as you're making the page and then later you can take the border off if you don't want the border. So let's hit OK and we can see what's happening. Now I created the table and it put it over to the left. Even though I did that trick aligning it first in the center, it puts the table on the left. So what we need to do to center the table is to right click, go to table cell properties, this box comes up, we select table and it'll say table alignment. We also want to choose center for that and we hit apply. You can see it centers the table and we hit OK. Those two steps are necessary to center the table. If you skip one of those steps and you save the page, it's going to put the table on the left. It's just something that this version of Mozilla requires that you do those things for it to work out. So I told you that it was going to have two rows and three columns. So let me show you the rows. This is the first row. Rows go across. And here's the second row. Now columns go up and down. Here's a column. Here's the second column and the third column. Now how do you remember this? Well in ancient Greek architecture they had columns and there were big posts that held the ceiling up and the post went from the ground to the roof. And you also see this style on government buildings and you know some old fashioned looking buildings you'll see columns in the front of the building kind of decorative but also functional. So columns go up and down and so do columns in tables go up and down. And just if you remember the columns go up and down you'll remember the rows are they go the other way. Now you can see that this has six boxes in this table. Each box is called a cell. Now this doesn't have anything to do with being in prison or anything. It's just the name they chose to call one little box of a table. So in the first row there are three cells. In the second row there are also three cells. In the first column there's two cells. In the second column there's two cells. And in the third column there's also two cells. So this is basically what a table looks like. You can choose a table to have as many rows or columns as you like. And when you start creating a web page, you're going to want to do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to delete this table. By hitting these X's, you can delete the different cells in the tables. And I'm going to put in a one by one table. So essentially, the table is, it has one cell. There's one row, one column. So let's insert a table. And we want to make it one row, one column, still 600 wide. And we want it fixed pixels. For now, we will leave the border as one. And we can go back later and make it zero if we choose to do that. So let's hit OK. Now, it put the table all the way to the left. So we need to right click table cell properties and we go up to the top and hit table and table alignment we select center and we hit apply and we can see that it made the change and we hit OK. Now if you wanted the table on the left because you were doing something special on the web page you could do that but as you see how I design web pages I'm giving you a basic template style that you can design a sales letter web page and when you go do your research through the target market tactics video you're going to see a bunch of these sales letter type web pages and you'll see that it's basically just one box in the middle with a bunch of stuff in that box and on the outside there's either a white background or a colored background or some kind of an image and that's your basic web page so that's what I'm teaching you here to create